Human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV, still infects a worrying amount of people in sub-Saharan Africa. In South Africa, almost 6 million people are believed to be living with HIV. But with all of the awareness and the media campaigns, we as South Africans seem to have become socially blunted towards the disease and how it actually affects people. Today we do a recap on HIV and AIDS and look at the advances in science that has led to an improved quality of life. With me is Dr. Helen van der Plas, an infectious disease specialist, Dr. Hello. Kevin Reby from Anova Health and Dr. Darren Green. Welcome to Doctor's Orders, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin, what is a virus exactly? Yeah, so a virus is essentially a particle or an agent that causes disease or illness in humans. And it also can't survive outside of a human cell. It needs to be inside of a human cell to almost hijack that cellular machinery to complete its life cycle and cause the disease that it's going to. And uh, Helen, what makes the HIV virus so special? Um, the HIV virus is a retrovirus. When it infects your immune cells, it integrates into your own DNA and it stays there. It stays there for life. And the other aspect of this virus is it's very difficult for our immune systems to eliminate it mm. because it targets the very cells that we use to eliminate viruses, for instance. So the HIV so HR virus uh, targets our body's own defenses, so our body's soldiers get attacked. Exactly. Now, the virus genetic repair mechanism is an error prone and it tends to mutate and change. So when the we... The virus mutates. The virus changes okay. constantly because so many particles are being, being produced mm -hmm. and it can't actually make sure that all the copies it produces are the same. Mm. So our response to an infection is one part of the immune response is forming antibodies. Now an antibodies, if you imagine this is a virus, we form antibodies and they will then neutralize and this gets fits removed. Fits very well. Fits very well and the viral particle, which is this thing, gets removed. Now imagine these other virus particles. Here's your antibody and clearly you can see and it, doesn't it doesn't fit, it can't be neutralized and it escapes our, one of our immune um, responses to the virus. Mm -hmm. But essentially the key message here is that we must remember that once we, we become infected, this virus is in our DNA, it stays there, and we don't have effective mechanisms to eliminate it. So the HIV virus is the cause and AIDS is the actual illness that you experience? That's correct. So AIDS is it's a clinical entity, yes. whereas HIV describes the germ that causes the clinical entity. How do you actually treat HIV? To treat the illness itself, we use antiretroviral therapy. But there's a lot more that people can do to maintain good health if they're HIV positive. And that's where things like nutrition comes in, monitoring stress levels, getting enough sleep. Let's talk a little bit about ARVs. The drugs that we use um, target the virus at specific stages of its life cycle and actually inhibits the formation of its own DNA, so it interrupts that it can't make more viruses, okay? okay? So the, at the moment we have uh, four drug classes available to us in South Africa mm. and a fifth one will be available soon. And with these drugs you can actually decrease the viral load exactly. and have the, absolutely the, normal the, full the life. The goals of treatment are essentially to, to decrease your viral load so much so that your own immune system can recover or restore. So I normally explain to my patients, we're putting the virus to sleep yes. because they must understand that we're not eliminating the virus. It's still there. Mm -hmm. So if you take the drugs away, that giant will awake. So Kevin, people always ask me, what can they do to prevent being infected with HIV? Yeah, I think that's one of the most important questions because we can't treat our way out of this epidemic. We have to stop new people from becoming positive. Now, everybody knows about condoms as being the way to prevent HIV, but there are new technologies. There are strategies of using antiretroviral medications in negative people to keep them negative should they be exposed to the virus. And the two strategies are PEP, or post-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis. So if you don't have the virus, you, must still, you can still take something. That's correct. So if somebody has a, an episode where they feel they may have been exposed to HIV, they could go to a clinician after that and get post-exposure prophylaxis. And that is taking antiretrovirals for 28 days and it reduces the risk of becoming positive by about 80%. Sure. Okay. The pre-exposure prophylaxis would be suitable for, say, a married couple where one partner is positive and one is negative, and the positive person is not on treatment. The negative individual could take antiretrovirals long-term 
to prevent them from becoming positive if they're exposed, for example, if a condom breaks. So okay. those are two new strategies that I think we will be hearing more about. Kevin, isn't medical male circumcision pre-exposure prophylaxis, in a sense? In a sense it is, because it is something that you're doing before you think you're going to be exposed. But I think the pre-exposure term is reserved for strategies that use antiretroviral medications. So mm -hmm. I think we would include medical male circumcision as prevention, but not as a prep sort of intervention. So how does male circumcision actually prevent contracting HIV? Yeah, it's quite fascinating. Yeah. So essentially the um, skin on the inside of the foreskin is a moist mucous membrane. It's a bit like the inside of your cheek. Mm. And those kinds of membranes are patrolled by surveillance cells in the body. And those cells, if they see virus on the surface of that skin, they will internalize it and they will present it to the immune system where it causes an infection. If you remove that skin, the skin that remains behind is thickened, keratinized skin, a bit like the rest of your skin. Yes. And that kind of surface isn't really patrolled by immune system cells in the same way as moist mucus membranes. So it membranes. actually confers more protection. That's right. You there's actually... much less chance of the virus actually getting in and causing an infection if there's exposure. And how much can it actually decrease your chance of getting HIV? Yeah, so the evidence shows it will decrease the risk by about 60%. It's very sure. significant. 60%? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that you should avoid using alternative forms of contraception, prevent... Absolutely, it's 60%, it's, it's not 100%. So you will get a magnitude of benefit, but obviously our primary defense against HIV is still going to be using condoms. Protect yourself. So there's also been talk about curing HIV. I think we need to be a little bit cautious about talking cure. Yeah. But what has happened is there have been a large number of reports in the press recently mm. about a couple of men who've been treated and cured through bone marrow transplantation. And then there and is a cured means that they can't find the virus anywhere in the body. Cured means that if you do a rapid test, they will screen HIV positive on an antibody screen. But when you go looking for the virus, you find none. So, so the virus is not there. The antibodies to the virus, the soldiers that fight the virus, but not the actual virus, virus itself. itself. Correct. So what it's telling you is that they were HIV positive because they've made these antibodies in response to being infected. But then when you go looking for the, acting, the active infective agent, you don't find it at all. So then doesn't that mean there is a cure? So I think this is where we need to be cautious. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there is another study of 14 people who've been cured, and recently there was a baby who's been reported to be cured at mm -hmm. one of the big AIDS right. conferences. The problem is we don't really understand what we've done. So we understand elements of immunity and HIV that have probably facilitated a cure there. But I don't think this is something that we could take a whole group of people and apply what we did to these cured patients and cure them again. So I think what it does allow us is an advanced understanding of cure science that now gives us targets to work towards to move closer towards a cure. So any final thoughts? We should all be tested regularly and not just assume that I am not at risk. You can never control what your partner does and then treat if needed. Yeah, I mean, I would think that treatment really has become, if not simple, a lot easier than it ever has been before. People who are positive today will be asked to take one tablet once daily with predictable side effects yeah. that will normalize their lifespan. And so Helen is correct. The dangerous situation is not knowing what your status is. Yeah. A much better scenario to be in is to know what your status is, access treatment really early because it's not difficult anymore and then you can expect really good health and good outcomes moving forward. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us on Doctor's Orders and for sharing your expertise. Okay. As South Africans, we should support all members of the community and remain interested in the health of the nation. There are luckily many such positive organizations in South Africa with a great attitude, fighting against the taboo of talking about living with HIV and inspiring people to lead healthy, balanced lives while HIV positive. But to get there, you have to know your status.